Example three, it wants you to, first of all, they've already done the blending for you, okay? So in the examples one and two, they took the two parts and then we put it together in order to find the derivative. We're going to go backwards now this time. They've done the blending and they want you to find the individual parts, the main function and then what you would normally plug into it, okay, to, in order to find the derivative. Well, in this case, the overall big function that I see is we have y is equal something to the power of negative 10. So I'm going to write it as is u to the negative 10. Okay, so that's the overall main function. And then what was to the power of 10, that's what I'm going to say is actually u. So u itself is x over 2 minus 1. Okay, so you all see that a little bit? So if I plugged this into there for that u, then I would get my function back again. But that way you can see the two pieces. So there's an overall piece of u to the negative 10, and then there's the inside piece of x over 2 minus 1. So we can say, so that's part of all if they want us to find those two. Otherwise, if I just go back to the main function, the dy dx, which is y prime, is going to be, okay, so taking the derivative overall, so let's knock this negative 10 down front, keep the base the way it is, and then subtract 1 from our exponent, and now we're going to multiply times the derivative of just the base itself. So the derivative of x over 2 is 1 half, the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, so cleaning this up, we have negative 10 times x over 2 minus 1 to the negative 11th, and that times a half. So if I want to multiply a half times negative 10, we'll get y prime to be a negative 5 times x over 2 minus 1 to the negative 11th, and we can call that problem done. So as you're kind of seeing with these functions that when you do it, you are basically, it's like you're taking the derivative of this one, which is negative 10 u to the um, negative 11. You're taking the derivative of that, so u prime is 1 half. And then technically, once you plug you know, u, all of this, into the base, and then multiply these two things together, so you basically have 10 u to the negative 11th times a half. Then just plug your u back into there. That's you're doing the exact same thing. It's just whichever way you see it better. Okay, so let's go to example four and just try it again. We want to break this example, y equals 5 cosine to the negative fourth x, into two parts, and then we're going to take the derivative for it. Okay, so what are the what two parts do we technically have? When I do problems like this, I kind of let the exponent be my guide a little bit. Like, first of all, I see that negative fourth power. Well, if I look at, like, maybe y to be 5u to the negative 4, then really what's being to that, what it has that power of negative 4 is cosine x. Okay? So if, just look at this. If I blended, if I put plugged in u back to your function, once you get 5 and then cosine x to the negative 4, so whether I wrote it as y equals 5 cosine x and I put the negative 4 there, or I put the negative 4 next to the cosine, notice it's not a power of x, it's just a power of that cosine function. It's the same thing. Okay? So if I have my y equals 5 cosine to the negative 4x, or my main function right here, so let's go back and let's do that. Let's do it the second way that I kind of showed you on the very end on that last problem. Let's do that first. If I told you to take y prime, you'd get negative 20 u to the negative 5, right? Just drop that exponent down front and subtract 1 from it. And then if I told you to take du dx, or if I told you to take u prime, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Okay? So what this rule basically says, then to get overall to get dy dx, what we're going to do is multiply these two things together. So it's negative 20 u to the negative 5 times a negative sine x. So negative negative will be a positive 20 u to the negative 5 times sine of x. And then all we have to do is just plug in what u is. Well, we declared u to be cosine x. So the answer here is negative 20 times cosine to the negative 5x times sine x, and there's your derivative. So that's that second way of looking at it, if you didn't want to look at it as a whole, as just starting from here and just bringing down the exponent and then taking this. It's either way you've gotten the exact same thing. If you want me to show you real quick, 
if I brought down that negative 4 in front, you would have gotten a negative 20. And then cosine subtract 1 from the exponent, so negative 5th x. And then time the derivative of cosine x, which is a negative sine x. And then right there would have been the negative 20. Or I guess we can say positive because you get the positive from the negative 20, the negative sine. Cosine to the negative 5th x times sine x. The exact same answer either way. Okay, so example five. We have, <clears throat> we want to find the derivative of q, t, q, dq dr for the following function. So again, it's one of those we want to break it down to the, to the individual pieces and then go from there. So what individual pieces? Well, when I see this function, the first thing I think of is really what's under that radical is 2r minus r squared. And since it's two, it's a cube root of that, it's actually technically the one-third power. So if I look at it in the two parts, I'm going to find my function. Looks like I'll say y equals the basic overall function is u to the one-third. And then what's being raised to the one-third, so in other words, what u is going to equal is 2r minus r squared. Okay? And then again, if we want to do show the do, two different ways of looking at this, we can say y prime is going to be one-third u and subtract one, so negative two-thirds. Or u prime, coming this way, is two minus two r to the first. Okay? So together, if we blended these, then d, I guess I shouldn't say the y's and the u's because we're in the form of dq and dr, but if I wanted to find then dq, dr, what it's going to be is these two multiply together. So one-third u to the negative two-thirds that times 2 minus 2r, two and then cleaning it up. I guess if we want to go and distribute 1 third times 2, so 2 thirds u to the negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds r u to the negative 2 thirds, and then all we have to do is plug in what u equals, and then we can be done with this one. So it's 2 thirds 2 minus, sorry, 2r minus r squared, all of that to the negative 2 thirds power, minus 2 thirds r, 2r minus r squared to the negative 2 thirds power. Okay, and that would be the overall derivative. Okay. Otherwise, if I went to this main function and started it as is, let me show you what that would work what, look like. So dq dr would be one-third, write your base out, 2r minus r squared, subtract 1 from that exponent, and now multiply times the derivative of that base, which is 2 minus 2r. Okay? And like before, if I decided to combine this together, so let's say multiply one-third throughout that guy, and then which you would have seen is one third times two, which is two thirds, and then the two r minus r squared, you would get these two terms all back together. So it's just two ways of doing the exact same problem. Okay, moving on. Let's go to example three. All right, we want to find r prime or dr d theta for r equals six times secant theta minus tangent theta times three halves. Okay, I'm going to start with just the function as is this time instead of breaking it down to its parts. So dr d theta, which is r prime. Okay, let's pull off the 6 for just a second. And let's focus on just this part. Because it's really, it's this parentheses to the power. So ignore what's in the parentheses for a second. You have a base to a power. So we're going to knock that power down front. Keep the base the way it is. And then subtract 1 from that power, which will give you 1 half. So the base then just stays the way it is. And then all we have to do is now multiply by the derivative of that base. So the derivative of secant, if we kind of go back and remember, it's secant x tangent x. And then the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. And I'm writing x, but I should probably be writing theta, shouldn't I? Because our independent variable is actually theta. So I'm going to go back and make sure I make those changes in there real quick. Okay, so again, let me just walk you through this. I just pulled the 6 off front, and then just focused on the next part, which is just that parentheses to a power. So taking the derivative of that, because that's the only part that has the variables in it, 
you knock your power down front, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then we take the derivative of what the base is. Okay, cleaning this up. 6 times 3 halves, which is um, 9. And then we have times secant theta minus tangent theta to the 1 half times secant theta tangent theta minus secant squared theta. And kind of thinking ahead, um, what we could do, hmm, I was just thinking if we can clean this up. We could, I was thinking if we clean, if we pulled out a secant theta, since that's common between those two terms, that would leave you with a tangent theta minus a secant theta. But I'm not sure if that's really going to get you anywhere because the bases wouldn't be the same with that front one. So it looks like, well, I guess maybe, why don't you follow with me this, we'll see if we can clean this up just a little bit more. As you know, we always have to be overachievers just a little bit. Let's see what we can do. So our prime equals 9 times secant theta minus tangent theta to the 1 half, and then like right here, so I said what they have in common is secant theta. So if I pulled that secant theta off, that would leave me with a tangent theta minus 1. Or I'm sorry, a tangent theta minus a secant theta. And if I wanted to, I could try to get these. So I look at, I have two bases here. I've got a base of a secant theta minus tangent theta and a tangent theta minus secant theta. So if right here, if what I factored out was actually a negative, so if we wrote it more as, okay, follow me through this. I'm trying to get the bases to be the same, in other words. What if I factored out a negative secant theta? Then that would have left a negative tangent theta plus a secant theta. Okay, so this is to the first power. It has the exact same base, and it's multiplied over here. You remember, these are all multiplied together. It's 9 times this parentheses times the second parentheses times the third. Since it's all multiplied together, and that these two have the same base, we can actually add the exponents. So our prime, I'm really running out of room here though. I'm going to move that secant theta to the front. So let's move this over to the front. I'm going to write it as negative 9 secant theta. And that common base of secant theta minus tangent theta, common base 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And that actually cleaned up. Ah, who would have known? So there's your answer to sitting right there.